everybody, my name is Seth Castillo. I'm the author and photographer of a series of pictures called Underwater Dogs. Me and my friends over at greatergood.org teamed up to create a really cool program called One Picture Saves a Life to improve the image of rescue and adoption through positive photography and marketing. We're teaming up with Behringer Ingelheim to inspire and educate more people than ever before to save lives. Here we are on the dog wing where we're going to meet some adoptable dogs and I'm going to teach you how to take more positive adoption photos. So we're looking for an ideal location for taking dog adoption photos outdoors. And it looks like we found a place right up here. So why are we choosing this place? A few reasons. Number one, the sound. We want to choose a place that's reasonably quiet for the dog. The reason for this is we don't want the dog to have a million distractions. We want that dog to be focused on taking a wonderful glamour shot. Number two, lighting. Why are we right here, right now? Well, we have terrific ambient light. The sun is behind us. And we have a nice shaded spot right here where the dog will sit and pose. And then we have a wonderful green bush back here, which is gonna create this fairy tale-like effect. The background will be all nice and green and beautiful. The reason for this is we want to attract people to come to this shelter if we're taking pictures inside with cages and concrete, it's not exactly that appealing, especially to folks that have never been to a shelter before, don't really know what to expect. So Mabel right here, Mabel! Mabel will be sitting in the shade, always in the shade. We're gonna have a little sun coming from behind us, which will create this wonderful glow on Mabel's beautiful fur. And then shoot right this way, right into the sun, again with the dog in the shade. Working distance, whether you're using a digital SLR camera or a phone, working distance is very important. It's gonna be about the same. I wanna be within reach of Mabel. I wanna be within three, four feet of Mabel so I can interact and engage with her so she's paying attention to me. If I get too far away, Mabel might be paying attention to what's going on over there. So you always wanna be close as possible, but I don't wanna be six inches away. You can see I'm getting down low on the ground. You always wanna be right on the same level as the dog. Mabel, look at this. I'm gonna use some kind of motivation. In this case, it's gonna be a dog treat. Mabel's allowed to have these. Always make sure your dog is allowed to have treats, very important. Head tilt right there. So if you can introduce an element of surprise, a weird noise, or a little squeaker ball, sometimes you'll get a terrific reaction from a dog. Oh, good job! Okay, one quick point. What do you do with the leash? Do you really want the leash in the photo? Probably not. For me, if I see a picture of a dog with a really tight leash, I'm thinking that dog is sort of forced to be in there. If you don't see a leash in the picture, I'm thinking this dog is choosing to be there. And I like that a lot better. So what we can do, we definitely want to have a lead on Mabel because we don't want Mabel to run off into the distance. So Zach here has the lead. He has a great grip on the lead. But right now we're going to see that lead in the pictures. We can Photoshop it out later or if we can get Mabel to relax enough, Zach here, he has about a six foot, seven foot lead. He can release this lead down her back. So now in the picture, Mabel, look, look right here. I'm not gonna see the lead in the picture anymore, so it's just Mabel. On occasion, you may meet a fearful or timid dog, and that's to be expected. Many of these dogs are coming in from unknown circumstances, and we don't know what they've gone through, so they may need some time to really trust humans again, and that's okay. So right here, we have Copper, and I don't know Copper very well. He might be a little bit timid. I wanna to try to understand, is he timid about me? Is he timid about the situation? Is he timid about the camera? If he's timid or fearful about me, the most important thing is to be extremely patient and have very calm energy Take your time. If I try to force this photo shoot to happen, it's just gonna end up in failure. And we're not gonna get any good pictures. And I'm also gonna stress out copper, which I don't wanna do. Maybe you spend five minutes with the dog and then spend five minutes with the dog later. The more they know you, the more they trust you. If it's about the camera, sometimes that it is. They don't understand what this thing is. It could be a little bit frightening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this on the ground here. If the dog is allowed to have treats, I'm gonna try to get the dog more comfortable with the camera Hey, Copper, 
what's this? I'm uh, putting some food here. I'm not sure he's gonna take it, but he's coming closer to the camera, which is great news. Hey, Copper, what's this right here? So that's good. So he doesn't seem to be reacting in a negative way. He's not sure about taking treats yet, but the more I can get him comfortable with the camera being close to him, the better it is. Sometimes it could be about the situation. This is kind of an odd deal, look. Hello, squeak, 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 hello, squeak. That's kind of a weird deal, you know? If you don't know me and I'm getting in your face like this with this camera, it's a little bit intimidating, especially if you're already a little bit nervous. So if it's the camera that Copper is afraid of, we want to keep the camera hidden away and find something else to distract Copper. So as he's looking at the ball, I'm going to slowly bring my camera out so he's not looking at the camera. Copper! Put it really close to my face. Mm, copper! Oh! What's this? <gasps> Didn't even notice the camera that time. Another fun idea is action shots. There's nothing more fun than to see a dog in their element, scampering along a trail, having an absolute blast. And so today we're gonna to try to get a couple of great action shots of Mabel here. To do that, we have to make sure Mabel is safe. So if she's not in a restricted area that's fenced in, we need to make sure she's on a secure lead. But we don't want Zach here in our action shots. So Zach has very strategically looped one lead onto another lead. So now we have a 12 foot lead. Mabel can get a little bit of a distance from Zach. That way Mabel's in my shots and Zach isn't. Okay, ready when you are. 